G U I L L I A N B A R R E is pronounced as Giabare. It is not infectious. It is not transmissible. It is an autoimmune disease. What it means is your own immunity is attacking you. For example, if you have raised a dog, that dog is unique to your household. The dog knows who the family members are. Suppose a thief enters your house and the dog attacks that thief and that thief somehow resembles a member of your family and the dog ends up biting the member of your family that is autoimmunity the damage is not done by the thief but it is done by the dog now suppose that thief enters your neighbor's house and the neighbor's dog does the same mistake and attacks the member of the neighbor's family that is again the autoimmune attack so the thief is transmissible but not the actual damage so Guillain-Barre syndrome is an autoimmune disease which could be triggered by a bacteria or a virus more often than not it is a bacteria called Campylobacter that bacteria can be passed from person to person though it is not likely it happens less likely but it can happen by the fecal oral route so the Campylobacter which triggers the Guillain-Barre syndrome can be transmissible but not the Guillain-Barre syndrome itself so a Guillain-Barre patient cannot give it to another patient it cannot give it to the doctors you're seeing that but why are we seeing so many cases if it is not transmissible if you get the Campylobacter infection the chance of Guillain-Barre becomes thousandfold compared to the rest of the community but we hardly see any cases of Guillain-Barre and the reason for that is that even if you get Campylobacter infection the chance of getting Guillain-Barre is very less say 3 in 10,000 then why are we seeing hundreds of cases the answer is startling I think there are lakhs of cases hundreds of thousands of cases of Campylobacter there has been a Campylobacter outbreak and statistically we are still seeing 3 out of 10,000 so we are seeing 100 cases of Guillain-Barre there could be lakhs of cases of Campylobacter which are not symptomatic once you develop Campylobacter some people develop some abdominal pain diarrhea things like that it gets better in a week or so and if Guillain-Barre is going to happen it will happen a week or two after the original Guillain-Barre infection or original Campylobacter infection the Guillain-Barre symptoms start like numbness in the feet in some people it can start in the cranial nerves with double vision trouble swallowing things like that in some people it starts with the leg and ascends up quickly the weakness can progress over two weeks in some people it can happen in hours or uh, literally days and then respiratory muscles can get involved some people get sick some people get on ventilator and some people can die unfortunately the treatment is very simple it's an immune disease soon as the diagnosis is made there is no specific test clinical examination good history taking and a lumbar puncture that shows increased protein if you do the diagnosis quickly and confidently then you hit it with IVIG and the idea is to hit it hard hit it hurriedly and hit it with all that you got there are other treatments like plasma pheresis steroids do not work steroids have no role here if IVIG stock is out plasma pheresis is a good option but it requires a central line and it is slightly more cumbersome my suggestion to the government within minutes of this questionable out this not questionable definite outbreak was to make IVIG free of charge and they are giving some like 200,000 rupees and all that let's let's not make it complicated let's make all IVIG free to everybody the people who go to private hospitals their IVIG also should be paid for and the reasoning behind that is suppose a patient goes to the hospital and his relatives are thinking whether they should use this expensive treatment whether the diagnosis is confirmed they might spend taking second opinions and discussing this 
and the precious 16 to 18 hours to 24 to 48 hours may be lost and that time could have been put to good use to actually prevent a ventilator requirement, a prolonged hospital stay and things of that nature. So that can be nipped in the bud and if the financial worry and the stress is taken away from the patient then soon as we find Guillain-Barre patient we can give IVIG. Most patients recover completely. There is some remaining of symptoms is possible but with good physical therapy all of them can be rehabilitated completely. So the idea is to treat it early to hit it hard. Those who have, have it, give them rehabilitation, save their lives, make sure they are not bankrupted in the procedure. So what precautions can you take? If you have had, a, if you live in that geographical area, if you have had some GI symptoms, there is nothing really you can do. There is no correlation between treating Campylobacter and preventing Guillain-Barre. It's my own personal opinion as a physician that if you have Campylobacter, you know it and you treat it, then the chance of severe Guillain-Barre is reduced. So if you are within seven days of GI symptoms and if you live in that area, you can talk to your doctor and consider taking two 500 milligrams azithromycin pills, but do not take it without talking to the doctor. It's not infectious per se, Guillain-Barre obviously, but we are seeing this cluster. There have been some clusters in the world, but this to my mind is the biggest Guillain-Barre cluster that we have seen after the cluster that we had seen in Peru. I'm astounded as to why the entire world is not looking at it, why it is not front page news, why it is not on the headline in New York Times. I think the interest will come and it should come then we will research, we'll investigate, just make sure it was the good old Campylobacter that was doing it and it is not like a new emerging virus that is that has learned a trick and it is masquerading as your family member in each and every household, tricking the family dog and creating some kind of autoimmune attack that will be well nigh impossible to prevent. Hopefully it is just the Campylobacter uh, so the world will be interested, the world will provide a lot of money. Now I heard that there are some cases in the other cities too. If there are cases in the other cities, we'll have to look at the travel history. Because when we see such a big cluster, apart from the infection, there is something environmental, like a water supply. And that water supply could have been um, polluted by poultry, like chicken, because Campylobacter can spread like that. So on a personal precaution level, wearing mask is no use for this. Just keep washing your hands, avoid eating chicken outside and even at your home for a few days. Let's see how it goes. If you have any questions or concerns, feel free to private message me at, at Dr. Gotse Ravi 1.